Hey guys, Jake the Instinct Camera Guy here. Today I wanted to cover what is actually a fairly common question despite being a pretty simple procedure, and that is how to clean the rollers in an SX70 camera. Um, there are a lot of guides online already on how to do this, and Polaroid also includes a section in their instruction manual that shows you how to do it, but I just wanted to let you know my method because I think it's a little simpler. Now on that subject of instruction manuals, um, if you're ever troubleshooting issues with an SX-70, I highly recommend you read the original 1970s instruction manuals that Polaroid produced. Long story short, they went to a ton of effort to ensure that their manuals were easy to read easy to digest, had lovely pictures, and would basically help the consumer with just about all the common problems that you would ever encounter. And it is just as relevant today as it was back in the 1970s. And if you Google uh, SX-70 Model 1 manual or Polaroid SX-70 Sonar manual, SLR-680 manual, whatever camera you own, Odds are you'll be able to download the PDF that someone has scanned in of the original documentation and access that completely for free. I know that might sound very obvious to people that are very used to Googling manuals all the time, but for a lot of people, they don't know that these resources exist. Now, my method of cleaning the rollers, uh, I, I prefer to take the door off the camera because it's simply a lot easier than trying to faff around with the whole camera and the door open. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. On the side of the camera where you've got the little ribbon cable, so basically on the side of the camera with the shutter button, there's a little piece of the door hinge that kind of sticks up. It looks like a metal tab. I'll see if I can show you guys by swinging the camera here. So this is the piece that I'm referring to right in here. And basically what we're gonna do is just grab that little tab and with our index finger, with our thumb supporting the other side of the door and just push that tab inwards and lift up and the door will remove. It's only held in place on two little metal stakes. So there's a little hole at either end of the, of the, uh, the door hinge there and it literally just clips onto two metal stakes. To put it in, it's the reverse. So starting with the side of the camera that has the electric eye on it, Again, press it in and it goes back together. Now, that might seem like a, comp a complicated procedure, but trust me, do it a few times and you'll get the hang of it pretty quick smart. So the easiest way to do this, of course, is with the door off. Once the door is sitting there, it's a lot easier to clean and you will need a cloth. You will need alcohol. And the other thing that I like to use is regular old glass cleaner. I am a huge fan of glass cleaner, be it Windex or any other knockoff brand. Glass cleaner is a really good cleaning product for more than just glass because it's designed to be uh, nice and soft. So it generally won't discolor plastics. It generally won't eat into things and it will take grime and dirt off. Windex and the like have been used by retro tech enthusiasts for decades to clean things, whether it be glass, plastic, rubber. I use it all the time to clean bellows. And my rollers are clean because, well, I keep them clean. But what I like to do, if I've got rollers that are really dirty, really crusty, I like to use the Windex first and then use alcohol uh, afterwards. Now, the reason why you would want to clean your rollers is twofold. The first reason uh, is Developing chemicals can sometimes ooze out of the packets of film, uh, out of the, the shots of film that you process through the rollers and can form sort of like white crusty stains everywhere. And those little white crusty blobs uh, can actually put dents in your photos as the film travels through and you end up with this sort of like repeating pattern of dots. Uh, the other thing is if goo and gunk and stuff get into the rollers, it can start to slow them down and sort of clog up the little gears at the end so that the motor will have to work extra hard. Um, and the third reason that you'd want to clean the motors is this top layer of the roller. You'll find this on every single SX-70. The reason that it's yellow is it's actually covered by like a layer of rubber. And this rubber is what helps grip the top of the photo and send it through the rollers. Now, by the time the Polaroid SLR 680 and the SLR 690 were released, they actually did away with that rubber and used just knurled metal instead. Um, and if you actually look very closely with a magnifying glass, you'll actually find that the knurled metal surface 
actually puts little microscopic marks in the photograph as it travels through because it's not soft rubber, it's, it's actually knurled metal. Now this isn't something that you'd see unless you literally had a jeweler's loop investigating every single photos, but that's just my finding. The SX70 rollers are technically superior in that way, provided that they are kept dust and gunk free. So um, a lot of guides online will tell you to use things like Q-tips. So. Uh, cotton tips, Q-tips, there's a lot of different names depending on what part of the world you're in. Um, nope, we're going to throw them away. We're not going to be using those. The reason being, they leave lint and fluff, and we don't want that on the rollers. So a lint-free cloth, like the kind of cloth that you would use to clean your sunglasses with, or even a microfiber cloth, is going to do a much better option than those silly Q-tips. Q-tips do have their place, but not on rollers. So for anyone that's never cleaned a window before, uh, this is really all you do. <laughs> That's it, just basically clean the roller until you're done. Uh, this is the top roller I'm cleaning. Um, you can also push down on the door flap, that'll give you access to the second roller hiding underneath, and you just want to roll them and make sure that they are moving cylindrically until you've got all dust and debris off of the entire lot. And that's about it. Now, if you really want to be fancy, you can very gently just pry the two sides of the door assembly and lift the flap forwards, and that will give you even better access, but pushing down on it also works. All right. And then, again, just with the same cloth, use a different section, hit it with the alcohol. Now, this is 99% uh, pure IPA, so isopropyl alcohol. Um, any good electronic store will carry it. Um, it's pretty cheap. I think that was like $10 or so for that little pump bottle. And it's just good stuff. And then what I'm doing is now redoing where I've hit the Windex. I'm just doing that with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. And what the isopropyl alcohol actually does is it just helps keep that rubber nice, nice and conditioned. So uh, you don't necessarily need to use the alcohol every single time. The Windex will do a fine job. But let's say, for example, your camera was really struggling with the ejection, like your images kept getting stuck halfway through the rollers, um, then using the IPA generally helps a lot. I don't have any of the particular product, but if you're still having slippery rollers, even after the IPA, you can use rubber rejuvenator, which you can get from most auto parts store. It comes kind of in like a spray can like this. Um, I generally find I never have to go that nuts. Alcohol works fine. And what you should notice is if you go back to a dry part of the cloth, after doing the alcohol, it should have a bit of friction on it now. Like it should feel kind of sticky, like you could kind of feel the cloth dragging, and that's it. That's really all you have to do. Um, a lot of guides online are telling you to use water mixed with alcohol, mixed with like... I tend to find a lot of guides online really overcomplicate the cleaning process. There are literally products out there that you can go and buy off the shelf that will do this. If any guide is suddenly getting you to do home chemistry, mixing things together, I would just ignore it. It's, it's really just not necessary, and it kind of baffles me <laughs> why they're like, no, get distilled water, and then you've got to mix five parts alcohol, and it's too hard. <laughs> just get something off the shelf. And that's really as easy as it is. It, it shouldn't be more difficult than this. Um, on the subject of rollers, every now and again you'll notice some little rusty spots. Uh, that is just the metal roller underneath oxidizing slightly under the rubber. It will not affect your photos whatsoever. It is just something that tends to happen, especially on later model rollers from Alpha and Sonar cameras, of which this camera is certainly a variant. Don't worry about it. You'll never clean it off. It doesn't affect photos. Even my personal camera has some. It's totally fine. Um, I think that's really all I wanted to say on the topic. Um, yeah, it's literally just a cloth and local household cleaning products will do a great job. Um, if you're out in the field and you have something explode, um, I usually, whenever I go out shooting, I usually have a cloth on me. Tap water works fine too in a pinch. You could even spit in it if you really wanted to. Um, the developing chemicals that end up getting encrusted into the rollers are water-based. So anything that is water-based like Windex, your spit, tap water, whatever, should take it off with enough scrubbing. Um, I just like to use these things because they give a really great finish. But obviously if there's an emergency out in the field, you can get by with just regular water 
and then go and do it properly a little bit later. Um, anyway, I hope that this video has been of help to you. Um, like I said, taking the door off is not that hard. If you are really worried about it, then I would sit the camera down on a desk like so and just do it like this. Um, but I prefer to take the door off. It just makes the whole process much easier. Um, if you like the video, give me a like, give me a subscribe. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what other tips you'd like me to talk about. And of course, if you want one of your cameras repaired, please feel free to send it my way. You've been a wonderful audience and I will see you next time.